my lab that I did my PhD in was um, using fruit flies as a system to study neurodegeneration, how neurons die, especially neurons that are important for vision, so photoreceptor neurons. And um, my work was mostly focused on figuring out a way to actually track neurodegeneration using fluorescent markers and being able to study in a non-invasive way uh, using in vivo fluorescence to study how neurons died or behaved over, over multiple days. And so there was a highly visual aesthetic part to my, to my work um, that almost became more interesting than, than the actual results. Um, and I became fascinated with microscopy and, uh, and I started making films. Early on in my PhD, I was in a seminar where I heard about the Fly Room, which is a laboratory that, was, um, that came to being in, at Columbia University in the beginning of the century and where they really discovered most of what we understand about, about genes. And they were also very active in terms of, you know, they spent a lot of time in speakeasies, they were communists, they were, there were all, all other things that were happening. And one of them was the womanizer, which, which was interesting because he was also working on genes that determined gender. Uh, or more specifically, genes that are sex determination genes, meaning that genes that are actually located on chromosomes that are your sex chromosomes, X and Y. And so, you know, we have X and Y chromosomes and we have specific genes that are associated to those. Uh, for example, genes that control eye color, uh, some of them are located on, on the X chromosome, thus the, the difference in color blindness between, between men and women. And the film, just to give you a brief background, is about the fly room, which is this laboratory in New York City in the 1920s, um, but it's told through the perspective of a 10-year-old girl that spends a day with her father in the laboratory and the father, initially reluctant to have her at all associated with his world, he realizes that she has an aptitude and an interest, and he starts teaching her about genetics. The flies have a big part in the film, their perspective. They actually are one of the characters of the film. The development of a fly from an embryo to a larva to a pupa. Um, this is like timestamps throughout the film. You, you tell people you make science films, they'll immediately say that you make you know, documentaries or science fiction, but really what I'm interested in, I mean, I'm interested in all of that. I'm interested in kind of hybrid filmmaking, how to take documentary elements, how to take fictional elements, how to create science in fiction versus, versus science fiction. When I design an experiment, I think about how am I going to visualize this experiment? How am I going to create almost like a mise-en-scene of, of this experiment? If I put a mouse in a maze or if I put a fly, you know, on a Petri dish, you know, to to immobilize it, to study its retina. There's something about it that, um, that is, is very visual. What is the relationship that scientists have with, or, you know, with living creatures that they work with every day, whether it's zebrafish, whether it's, it's you know, nematodes, you know, whether it's fruit flies. I mean, it's, it's just a fascinating, it's almost, to make an analogy, it's almost like talking about musicians that look like their instruments or have this like bond with, with their instruments. So, so that's what, what fascinates me.